3D printing, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, all are going to have a profound impact. And there's one more technology. It's not typically quite as well understood yet, but that's likely to have just as profound an impact as the rest of these. Just over 10 years ago, last fall, on October 31st of 2008, at the height of the global financial crisis, a paper was published on the internet by a person or perhaps a group of people, still as yet unidentified, but under the pseudonym of Satoshi Nakamoto. And that paper described how a unique combination of advanced cryptographic and synchronization technologies could enable for the first time the development of a digital currency viable as both a means of exchange and a store of value. The paper called this digital currency Bitcoin. And the underlying set of technologies quickly came to be referred to as blockchain. Now, because Bitcoin was the first killer app, if you will, for blockchain technology, people often conflate the two, assuming that they're essentially one and the same. It's very important to make the distinction that Bitcoin is simply one potential implementation of blockchain technology outside of hundreds that are already in place and thousands of more potential applications of the technology. To confuse Bitcoin with blockchain, would be a little bit like confusing email as the first killer app on the internet with all of the many other things that we do with internet technologies today, including, among other things, support blockchain technology. By three and a half years ago, seven years after the paper was published, things had evolved to the point where as conservative a publication as The Economist magazine stated that Blockchain was the most important advance in record keeping since the invention of the double entry bookkeeping system in Florence, Italy in 1494, more than 500 years earlier. So what is it that makes blockchain so powerful and so transformational to business, economy, and society as we move forward? Well, blockchains let us do four things that we couldn't do before and do them all well and simultaneously. First of all, it allows you to create a permanent, immutable, signed and time-stamped record of identity of people, places, or things, ownership of assets, tangible or intangible, such as intellectual property, business transactions, or contractual commitments. It then allows those records to be shared among two or more entities, dozens, hundreds, thousands, in any particular business or social ecosystem. People, businesses, uh, interested and, and authorized third parties like auditors or regulators of various types, without having to depend on any one of those parties to be the master record keeper, and without having to spend to pay a third party intermediary to provide that service. For those so authorized, that information can be seen globally with complete transparency in near real time. And for those authorized to update that information, they can also do so. And yet at the same time, for those who are not authorized, the information on the blockchain is essentially unhackable. Now, as soon as I use the word unhackable, I see the hackles going up on the back of a few people's necks saying, well, Jack, given enough time and resources, any computer can be hacked, right? Yes, that's true. And that's why blockchain information is not stored on any computer. It's stored on many computers. Depending on the implementations, anywhere from dozens to hundreds to thousands of computers worldwide, having uh, all different kinds of environments, behind firewalls, on the clouds. And if you want to hack into a blockchain, you have to be able to hack in to a majority of those computers and change those records in the way that you choose to simultaneously in all these different environments. Because if you just hack into a few of them or one of them, 
The synchronization technology identifies that the information on this computer or this small group of computers doesn't match the consensus of what the rest of us have. Therefore, ignore it. It's invalid. Use only the valid information that's on the blockchain as a whole. And you'd have to be fast, because if you don't successfully hack into a majority of those computers before it synchronizes, which is anywhere from a few minutes on down to seconds or fractions of a second, you'd have to start all over again with the entire process. It's one thing to use the resources to eventually hack into a single computer, like the Target credit card database or the Equifax credit records database. It's entirely another thing to hack into hundreds or thousands of computers all over the world simultaneously and do it that quickly. In fact, uh, a physicist from Harvard estimated that for someone to successfully hack the oldest, largest, and slowest of the blockchain implementations, which is the Bitcoin blockchain, with 7,000 nodes around the world, the amount of energy that would be required to drive the amount of computing power that would be needed to simultaneously successfully hack a majority of all those nodes and complete that process before the next synchronization, which with the Bitcoin blockchain takes place every 10 minutes, would be approximately equal to the amount of energy emitted during the same period of time by the sun. Now, I know some of you are saying, so you could do it then. 